What's the word, y'all? Let's quickly, and I mean quickly, talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves forcing a game number five, final score, 105 to 100. I think the what we got to start off everything is with Carl Anthony Towns. Because in this game, as a neutral fan, I went through pretty much every single emotion you can have with Carl Anthony Towns today. I was frustrated with him having the lack of, I don't know, awareness on some of these fouls. And you can argue with yourself on whether or not they were real calls or not. Regardless, he was in major, major foul trouble. And when you're back against the wall, it's a win to go home game. You get five fouls in the first three quarters and some two quarters and some change. I just felt like it was it was a wrap. But then Carl Anthony Towns proceeded to play 15 minutes. One of the best 15-minute stretches of or the most impactful 15-minute stretches of his entire career where he had five fouls, but he continuously played through it. And this guy who is one of the greatest shooting bigs of all time, again, he self-proclaimed the greatest. I'm going to say one of the greatest. He finally had a good shooting night. And all of that happened in the third and fourth quarter when he was having five fouls. And the, the, the go through that adversity is, is pretty dope. He ended up with 25-5, again, 9 of 13 from the field. He started this game off the way a lot of people were telling him to start the game off. Get to the basket. Remember, you're close to a seven-footer. And you've been guarded by P.J. Washington in a lot of these cases. Get to the basket. Use the post game a little bit more. And he didn't take his first three-pointer to the third quarter. And at that point, it was on. Like, four for five is, is really good. And some of those threes that he hit were like really grenades. Where Anthony Edwards has uh, four seconds on the clock. He's trying to create. He can't create on Luka Doncic. And he kick it out to the wing. And Carthy Towns, the flat for the jump shot, is cash. That is huge. And I said this after game number three. I said it on the podcast, I believe, as well. Through the first three games, the defense hasn't been the major problem with the Minnesota Timbers. It ain't been great. It ain't been the number one defense that we saw in the regular season, but it's not the reason they were down 0-3. The reason they were down 0-3 is because their two-star players did not come to play on the offensive side of the ball. And, well, the first game that they win, is it a surprise that it's a game that Anthony Edwards has 29-10-9 and with Carthony Towns has 25-5? I don't think it's a coincidence. That when your best players play to their full potential or play to just a normal standard, don't even need a Michael Jordan game or one of the greatest performances ever, just play a normal basketball game. You have a real chance. And hell, through the first three games of the series, they had a chance with Anthony Edwards and with Carthony Towns not having great games. So they had great games now, and they win it. Um, and the one shot that cat that um, that Anthony Edwards hit down the stretch was a very impactful shot, a huge, huge shot for him. And for a second. It felt like he wanted to look at the crowd and start talking trash. And then he remembered that he was down 3-0 in this series. And we can't really be talking a ton of trash because our back is against the wall. So it was a huge game. I thought this was the best defensive game um, of Rudy Gobert's series so far. And maybe that goes into not having Derek Lively, who's basically the third most impactful player for the Dallas Mavericks. Probably plays a part in this one. But I thought Rudy Gobert did a pretty damn good job today, which is... I wasn't saying the same thing over the first three games of this series. So, um, Cal Anderson was just a huge part of this down the stretch with his defense and everything. So, I, I didn't love the idea of Cal Anderson closing out the last couple games. Today, it worked out very well because they didn't really get any bench production from Nas Reed or pretty much anybody else. And the final stat line for Cal Anderson was 2 4 4 and 3. It's not like he was out there with 14 or anything, but I thought it was a very impactful game. Um, for the other side, the Dallas Mavericks, I mean, this is the first time in a series where Cat and Anthony Edwards outscored Luka Doncic and Kyrie. Kyrie was had 16 points or 33% shooting, and Luka Doncic had a 28 15 to 10 game. It's so crazy uh, because that's like the worst game of the series for him. 28, 15, and 10 was the worst game of the series. That's insane. Um, but, hey, we get another game of basketball. And, again, I'm not rooting for anybody to win. I don't really care if it's not my Bulls. But the idea of if this being a sweep and we would have to wait to June 6th to see our next basketball, NBA basketball at least, I ain't like that idea, so I'm kind of okay with this. Is it going to be a gentleman's sweep? Maybe. Could the Wolves pull the Miami Heat? Maybe, I guess. they. F the, the real question is, did they find anything? You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when you win a game, you're like, okay, what can we do from this game? What can we replicate from this game? Did they do anything differently with Luka Doncic? No, not necessarily. I thought they played very similar coverages. I thought that they played a little bit more um, a point of attack or uh, up at the point. But that's kind of it. It was just a matter of Luka Doncic having a, a bad game as far as the shooting goals. And the other side of the things, our offense just looked better. 
So, I mean, I mean, maybe there are some small things you could take away from it. I saw a lot more Anthony Edwards on Luka Doncic today. Like, that's probably something you think about. Because I know early in the series, he wanted Kyrie Irving. Didn't really want the smoke. But maybe Luka Doncic is more his speed. And I mean that in almost in a literal sense. Where Kyrie Irving is always moving. And he's so fast. And he's so so quick with things. Luka Doncic is very slow and slow. Very methodical. So, maybe that's something you take away from all of this. Um, but if you're the Mavericks, of course, you're playing with house money at this point. Kyrie Irving said before the game, this is their Super Bowl. For us, it's just a normal game. And I, I feel that to an extent, um, obviously, you get three more shots at this to win this series. But I, I do like the idea of having some level of urgency, even though you're up 3-0. And I'm not saying they lacked ur urgency at all. I think they they played as if this was a win and go home. But to the comments beforehand, I was like, oh, maybe you, you maybe you should treat it like it's your Super Bowl, too. A full week and a half rest going into the finals would be kind of dope. You know, you ain't got to think about trying to push Derek Lively to come back too early if you have a week and a half of rest. But now with it going into game number five, and hopefully he's just completely healthy, ain't got to worry about that. But now going into a game number five, you really question, like, you know, is he is he ready? Even if he's not ready, should we try to give him a chance to go out there and hoop? Because obviously our offense didn't look as good without him today. And again, it could be just shooting variants where the first three games of the series, our two best players could miss. And now we just have one of those games. I don't really know. This is why we love basketball because it could be as simple as hit your shots or it could be as complex as schemes and out of bounds and or, or a sideline of bounds plays and under the rim. out of. It could be a lot of different things. One thing I will say before I get out of here, I thought this game was officiated very poorly. Um, and I'm not here to say one team got a favorable whistle versus the other. I'm just saying objectively this felt like like if if this was my first game of watching basketball, I feel as though I wouldn't care to watch the next game. Whether it be just the whistles being very in inconsistent or the, the, the challenges, man. I mean, I guess this has been the case all season long with the challenges where we at home see one replay and we can immediately say, oh, that's out of bounds with Daniel Gafford. Oh, that's not a flagrant foul. Oh, that is a flagrant foul. But instead, it takes them and the, the people that got all of the, the monitors and all of the people at Sakakis and all of this stuff, it takes them five different minutes for them to see the singular play. That bothers the hell out of me. Um, and I don't know what the recipe of it is other than saying like, hey, if we can't find the answer to it in 60 seconds, then whatever our original call was, let that be it. But hopefully we get um, a better, more um, complete officiated game in game number five. Regardless, I'm excited that we get more basketball. Let me know what you think about this game. I feel like I'm forgetting some of the stuff, but hell, we'll talk again in two days about it.